Hi, uh, my name is Keith Brooks. I'm an actor, director, writer, nunchuck enthusiast. Uh, and Jessica from the HUD School asked me to uh, make a little video talking to people uh, for the Technique Tuesday. For the past couple of weeks, we've been doing live uh, classes um, for people to view and sort of get some ideas from and all that jazz. Unfortunately, we can't do that this week, but instead you get a nifty video. Isn't that neat? So what I'm going to do, because I'm amped up on Diet Mountain Dew and hot wings, here's like five pieces of advice for actors. Now, these bits of advice might be about technique specific things, about experiments, life advice, advice about, uh, advice about like, um, stock, stocks maybe? Tamagotchi pets, basketball routines, how to produce your own snuff film, all sorts of advice. That's stupid. Number one. Go to classes. I mean, that seems like an obvious one. That seems like if you came to McDonald's, I would try to sell you fucking French fries. That, that's what this. It doesn't matter where you take the classes from. And, and let me broaden it from just go to classes to keep learning about the craft. I run into a lot of actors who think that once they get an agent, they're sort of done with that training aspect. Or even once they start taking classes at one school, they consider themselves to be, well, I've taken Meisner for uh, six months. I'm good to go. And that's not necessarily true. If you can find a technique that works for you, that's fantastic. If you find a technique and you're not curious enough to explore other techniques, that's totally fine. If you find a technique, you try to explore other techniques and they don't work for you, I get that, it's not for everybody. But I feel that every artist who I've ever encountered, read about, worked with, anything like that, that is worth their weight uh, is a curious minded person who accepts and not only accepts, but embraces the idea that there is always more to learn. You can always improve upon your skill sets. There are, let's say, 24 popular, famous acting techniques uh, throughout the Western world. But how many techniques are there in existence? There's probably fucking thousands upon thousands. Because so often they say classical theater or classic acting technique. But that encompasses Peking opera, Grecian theater, Roman theater, Kabuki, no, <laughs> like everything. And, and it's not the same ideologies that lead to each one. Even if it's part of a historical narrative that leads us to where we are now, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have gems and, and rubies and rhinestones that we can learn from, right? As an artist, you can follow one technique to the letter, but you can also pick and choose different elements from different techniques that you might want to use this tool set, this skill, this idea in one specific performance. You are a mechanic and a car is comprised of hundreds of parts. And the one tool that you have in your toolbox might not be applicable for every single one of those tools. So it never hurts to dive in and understand other tools better, just in case you ever need them or find the use for them. So I guess my number one, since I've changed the title of it 15 fucking times, is never stop learning more about your craft. Even if you are successful in your craft, even if you have gotten to a point where you feel pretty confident, there's always something more for you to know. I got a fucking MFA in this shit, in this bullshit. And last weekend, I tried a completely new acting technique for me and it blew my fucking mind. It made me super nervous, super scared, but it was a lot of fun to have another aha moment and learn a different way of doing things. Number two, never stop digesting media. I know me saying that makes it sound like I work for Netflix, but I clearly don't. Painters learn how to paint by studying the masters. Musicians learn how to play their instruments by not only playing other people's songs, but listening to other people's songs as well. These forms of media that you consume now give you a vocabulary. They give you a different vocabulary than you had before. It shows you, oh, you can do something like this. Oh, you can create something like this. And more importantly, Every time we're watching a new film, we're playing a new video game, we're reading a book, a comic book, a novel, going to a ballet, going to see an opera, shooting a porn, this is about me now. We are experiencing a new journey in storytelling 
but we're also seeing a new perspective. And what acting is about is about perspective. It's about empathy. It's about being able to relate to someone else. And all of these different forms of media encourage that, right? Transport me. Transport me to something I've never experienced before. Because if you do that, I will now know that experience is possible. Now, I've, I've just sounded like a, a PBS advertisement, but here's the thing, empathy is almost like a muscle. So the more we use it, the better at it we will become. This helps us not only in our acting, but also in our actual lives. The task of being an actor is understanding how people operate. And one of the wonderful side effects, one of the unfortunate curses of being an artist is you will start to ponder how everyone around you operates and question motivations and their objectives and all that shit. But it's, it's one of the things you deal with. And that's a good thing. I, you know, I feel in some circles, the idea of being an empathic person is now frowned upon. And that's unfortunate because because every person in the world just wants to be understood. We want to be understood. The person across the aisle wants to be understood. And empathy is the bridge that makes that possible. Can't believe I'm, I'm having to explain why empathy is fucking important, but that's the world we live in. Number three, this is an acting exercise I want you to try. I call it Dracula's Doors. I didn't know what I called it until I just said the name. And that sounds fun. Say it with me, Dracula's Doors. I want you just to open a fucking door in your house. That's all you have to do. Find a fictional character or a historic character, whatever that you know. For 10 seconds, think about what you know about the character and then go open that door as the character. Don't overthink it. Just let instinct of your understanding of who that character is take over and allow you to let the character move through you. A lot of times we're, we're gonna think about this. We're gonna be like, well, it's simple. It's just opening a fucking door. We'll make the character more complicated now. If it's just simple and opening a door, don't be just George Washington. Try Billy the Kid. Oh, Billy the Kid simple? Great, be Grimace from McDonald's. Oh, you're too young to know who fucking Grimace is. Great, be an octopus. Be an octopus and open that door. I call it Dracula's Doors because I do it a lot. And, and, and I get really into it, like fully gripping the door and wrapping my claws around it. And the point of it, the point of it's twofold. Character isn't only defined by the lines of dialogue they say. They're defined also psychologically, what they want, uh, what they believe in, all that stuff, the nonverbal aspects of that. But they're also defined by the gesticulations, by the way they move. And we often forget that our characters have a three-dimensional life that requires them to do the mundane things of their world. Dracula has to fucking, I don't know, wash his clothes. That's still something he has to do. So how would Dracula go about washing his clothes? So trying to inhabit the character fully, just as an experiment, oftentimes can give us more insights and ideas about how this character behaves under different given circumstances. In addition to that, Meisner was a big uh, proponent, is a word, is it the one I want? Yes, yes it is. Meisner was a big proponent of silencing not only the inner critic, but the part of our minds that encourages us to be the most clever in the room, we don't need that. We don't need thought prevailing. Instead, we need instinct prevailing. And oftentimes this notion of instinct can help us at least put our foot in the door of trying to understand who this person is. Even with the briefest Rolodex review of what we know about a character, it can bring to mind all of these different thoughts and ideas and conceptualizations about how this character becomes three-dimensional. If I'm playing an octopus like I screamed at you earlier, then my body's a lot larger until I need it not to be. That's my understanding of an octopus. If I was an octopus, would I open the door with only one tentacle and be doing something else or tentacle after tentacle after tentacle? I don't know. It's, it's sort of your character. And what does the instinct tell you to do? Now, what does that action that you've just committed tell you about the character? Sometimes suppressing thought and, and supplanting it with instinct can lead us to more thoughts and more enrichment of who these characters are. Here's number four. Let's say you're working on a scene and you're just having difficulty getting into the scene. You're having difficulty really connecting to the character, finding the meat and potatoes of it. God, meat and potatoes are fucking great. And, and you seem at a loss. It's just dialogue and you're not connecting to it. Experiment with it. Try out different acting techniques or acting games. Here's one that you could try. All you need is a friendly 
deck of cards. They don't have to be Marlboro cigarette cards. I was born in 1985. I'm really shocked we didn't have cool camel light baby bottles. So I'm reading a uh, scene. Um, it's my first time really going over it. I have dialogue with two other characters and I'm looking for a different way of understanding the character. Arbitrarily, I'm gonna draw cards. My relationship uh, is this. This is who I identify as. I'm a five of hearts. The first person I'm talking to is a queen. So I am going to speak to that first character with more reverence than I have even for myself. And the second person is a five, so they are my equal. And I'm gonna try to play the scene out like that. This game is called uh, Social Status, and it's just this quick idea of trying to create the different layers. What do? You, what's your relationship with these other people in the scene? What do you think of them? Do you look up to them? Do you look down upon them? Are you in a lower economic class than they are? Who knows? You justify it how you want. But this tells me that I am, again, a five? Jesus, am I just a five? For real? And the first person I'm talking to is a three. They're beneath me. Fuck, I'll spit on them. That's how I roll. <laughs> you like Nickelback? Pfft. Second person is a nine. So they're a little bit above me. They're not extremely above me, but they probably have cooler sneakers than I do, at least. That gives me some sort of uh, extra thing, another given circumstance that I now can apply to that scene. And, and just through experimentation, see if it gives me anything fun, anything rewarding, anything I can use further on. And my number five uh, piece of advice is be kind. Listen, uh, the world's tough. It's gotten even tougher over the past couple of years. And unfortunately, within a ton of industries, but especially ours, there is an idea of self-entitlement. There is an idea of faux superiority, an idea of selfishism, like uh, of selfish egotism. There's so many actors out there who think only their work matters and, is on, and are only interested in promoting their own work. Don't be that. Help others as you see them struggling. Or even more so, when you're on set, the crew has been there for hours before you arrived and will be there for hours after you leave. There is a reason, there is tension right now in negotiations with uh, strikes and stuff like that. And it's because crews, and workers on film sets have been mistreated for long enough. Don't add to that problem. We as actors are often coddled. We're often babied. We get our own special areas and our own special food and all that bullshit. There's really no reason for it, but whatever. Remember that your crew members are always there to make you look better. They're helping your performance. So thank them for their time. Every time you're on a set, thank as many people as you possibly can, because it's not only an amazing opportunity, but all of these people around you are busting their asses. To do this job is a dream that most people can't ever envision actually coming to pass. And look at you, you're doing it. You're actually out there and you're auditioning and you're studying and all of that, and that's amazing. Be thankful for all of that. Understand that it's hard work and you still gotta bust your ass, but be thankful for all the people that are along with you for that journey along the way. Thank a crew member, thank an IOTC member, thank your acting teachers, uh, not me, I don't give a shit. Thank other actors for going through the struggle with you. The world needs more gratitude and the world needs nice people right now, perhaps more than ever. So just, you know, be a nice person and shit. Fuck yeah.